Okay, I know that you just want to make it mass, but I'm feeling some rhythms coming along. You know what type of rhythms? Of course, some logarithms. No. <laughs> every time, eh? every time. Okay, so for <laughs> the logarithms of me, let's let's go for it. So I'm gonna go through two of the functions that were in the exercise. Um, in fact, one of the functions, and just look at domain and range again quickly. So here we had our x and y axes, Cartesian plane, and we saw. Hey, look, we got an exponential. We saw it's a fraction, so we see it's decreasing. We know that the y values must always be positive. So we knew that that graph needed to look something like that. Let's call it f. And we know that it goes through this point here of um, 0, 1. In fact, let's just put this over here, 0, 1. And that's that graph. Cool. I'm not even going to show another point, although we probably should. Now we worked out our inverse and we said, okay, but before we get to our inverse, let's just look at this function's domain and range. So the domain relates to all the x values. So what x values can we put in? We can put in any value, any real number. So x we could say is x is any real number, or perhaps you said x and this is going well. X is between negative infinity and Ew, what's happening to my writing here? Negative infinity to infinity. Okay, and our range, well, our range, well, what is the range here? The range all the positive y values. So here we're going, well, y must be greater than zero, strictly greater, it never gets there. Or you might have said y is an element of zero up to infinity. Now, let's look at our inverse function. So our inverse, when you worked it out, you went, okay, well, if, let's do it here. Our inverse function, f minus 1 of x, was log, base was the same, fifth of x. Like y equals log a fifth to the x. And you did that, and you did all that work already as it went there. So now let's look at our domain and range here. So our domain for this graph, before even sketching the function, we can work at our domain because we've got the range of the original function. Remember, it's x is y, y is x. So our domain here is x is greater than 0, or perhaps you wrote it as x is an element of 0 to infinity. So the link I really want to make here is the range, the domain x is y is y is x. So if we looked at the range of our inverse, then our range, we just need to look at the domain of our original function. So this was, well, this was x is basically any real number. So here, y is any real number, which you could have written in either of those two ways. So x is between negative infinity and infinity. It sometimes can help draw our graph. We know that it's decreasing. This thing said that it's all y values. This thing said that it's all x values. So we know that it must be doing something like that. And this here is 1, 0. So just a kind of recap of domain range and where it fits in here. But let us do some inequalities. So inequalities. Log base 2 of x is less than or equal to 3. Now, for inequalities, it's not brand new stuff because what we need to do, of course, is have a Cartesian plane so we can draw and see what's happening. Okay, so let's get our graph. y equals log base 2 of x. Right, increasing. I think we've drawn this graph a few times now. And we said, okay, that graph looks like that. We know that it goes through this point. 1, 0. Hopefully now we're feeling a bit more comfortable, confident with this, and I was going to label it F. It doesn't even say F. Okay, now we're saying when is this graph less than or equal to 3? So in other words, when is the output of this graph less than or equal to 3? So if we drew the line Y equals 3, what we're trying to work out is what are the X values that make this less than 
3. So let's highlight it. Let's take this and go, okay, so the bit of the graph we're interested in is, when is this less than 3? So the bit of the graph we're interested in is that bit. So what we're interested in describing is what are these x values that make that true. So the graph is less than 3 here, so what we need to describe is these x values, where that's going to be the case. So we only have one thing really to do here, and that is, if we're going to work out this point here, let's call it A, then we're just going to describe all of these x values over here. So what do we know about point A? Well, we know its y value is 3. If we're given the y value of a function, how do we work out the x value? Well, if we look at y equals log base 2x, if we're given the y value, let's just substitute in. So 2 to the 3 equals x. Let's show that step. x equals 8. And so that, let's keep showing these steps. It's, I keep reinforcing. Let's not just skip over things and go, oh, well, we can see x is 8. Now let's just show that conversion. So x equals 8. So what we basically worked out here was point A is 8, 3 which means this inequality holds true for all of these values here. So x is between, well, it's between 0 and 8. Ever get to 0? Nope. Do you want to include or exclude? Well, that bit there says that we must include. So we're going to include 8. So there we go. 0, 8. Okay, let's, let's go for another one. Log base 2 of x is greater than or equal to negative 3. Okay, same graph. So jot it down. I'm going to jot it down, and you can jot. It's the same one we had before. I just want it on a separate set of axes so that we don't confuse ourselves. So here we said the graph looks like that. We know this point here is 0, 1. We... Now we're looking, when is this greater than or equal to negative 3? Okay, so let's draw this line here, y equals negative 3. Again, let's look here and say, so, ooh, come on. We're looking when the graph is greater than, so the graph is greater than here. So what we're looking at describing are all the x values that correspond with that. So we're looking at, describing these x values. That's what we need to describe. Okay. So all we need to work out is that point of intersection. And we'll get there eventually. There. Okay. So if we can find out this point here, then we can describe all of those x values going what that way. All of those x values going that way. So this point here, let's call it A. A is not sitting up there. A is sitting down here. A. Then we're good to go. Because then we'll describe all the x values greater than that. So what do we know about point A? Well, we know the y value is 3. How do we find out the x value? Well, especially if we make it negative 3, we'll do a bit better. So we know that that graph is y equals log base 2 of x. So we know that y value is negative 3, so log base 2 of x, 2 to the negative 3 equals x, x equals, not negative 8, eh? an eighth. I say that, it's just one of those things that pops up, you suddenly see negative 8, and you go, wait, it doesn't, doesn't match the picture. So we've got an eighth, so now we need to describe all these x values here. So we're going to write x is an element of, we're going from an eighth, and we're carrying on forever and ever. So we're going to infinity, which we can never get to. Include, exclude. So this bit here is telling us to include, so we're going to include. Okay, one more example, but let's have a fractional base and look at similar numbers. So a log base half x less than or equal to negative 3. So for this one, we've got... Cartesian plane, you know it's coming right, x, y, doom, doom, 
increasing, decreasing, decreasing. Okay, so we know that this doesn't look like that. Why doesn't it look like that? That that was the exponential, and we couldn't have negative values of x, so it just it should feel no way that can't work because that. So let's go. Now it's decreasing, and it's a log graph, so we know it's going to look something like that. We know this point here is one zero. I did write that correctly. Ah, oh, you see, I keep on. At least I picked that up right. One zero. Did I do the same on the first one. No, not the first one. Right. Okay, so back to where we were. When is this less than or equal to negative three? So let's draw our line here. Y equals negative three. That point is surely going to be an exciting, interesting point. What do we know about that point? Well, we know the y value is negative three. So what we're trying to work out now is we're trying to see all of these. We're trying to see when this graph is less than negative three. So it must be. Ooh, that's a little bit extreme. So we're trying to see this part here. So what we're going to try and describe are all those x values. So the x values are going to be all of these values here. If we can describe those, we're describing whenever that graph is less than negative 3. Okay, so let's go ahead and do it. And how are you feeling? You're feeling like, yeah, oh, no, I could, I could do this now. Okay, so we've got this graph here, y equals <coughs> log base a half of x. We know the value is negative 3. We're trying to work out what the coordinates of point A are. So we've got log base a half of x, a half to the power of negative 3 equals x. So it's 2 to the 3, which is 8. But you know what? Always got this kind of help, so... If we needed to, we could just go, you know what, we've got 1 over 2 to the power of negative 3, 8, right? Gets us there if we need it. Negative 3, so what we've worked out is that negative 3, no, what did I say? What? 8. Uh, doing well, hey? What's about you? What's about you? So 8, come on. So x is 8, getting there, right? Getting there. 8 and negative 3. I mean, if we started, this is the nice thing, as I said, of keeping your graph going, is if we put in a negative 3 there, we go, wait, this just, something doesn't feel right. Why would you have a, the, the negative x's are here by my head. So, no. Okay, so we've got that point, which means that we can describe all of these and go, we're trying to describe this part here and the x values. So... We're trying to describe x as an element of we're going from 8, we're carrying on until infinity, and are we including or excluding? Ah, this thing here said including, so we're going to include. Okay, and there we are. Okay, so the last but let's do the same thing and see when this is greater than 3. So Cartesian plan, go for it. George, pause. Let's get you there. X, Y, and we know that this graph is decreasing. We know that it goes through the point. I'm going to get it right this time. 1, 0. Yes, winning. And now we're looking at this and saying this graph here is y equals 3. And see, it kind of cruises along eh, when, you, when you know what you're doing. And of course, that gives a nice ruler. Okay, so what are we trying to do here? Oh, we're trying to see when is this graph greater than 3. So, let's do this. I don't know which colors to choose now. Um, work with me. Come on, come on. So, we're trying to see when is this graph greater than... I'm going to take this down a bit. When is it greater than... So, what we're trying to describe is when are all those x values. So, let's go this. So we're trying to describe these x values over here. Mm -hmm. Looking okay, even with the terrible drawing, we're sort of getting it. Okay, so we've got here, so we're trying to find what 
this point here is, let's call it A. And if we can work that out, we can describe these points here when the graph is above 3. What do we know about point A? Oh, well, we know Y is 3. So let's go. So in that graph, Y equals log base a half of X. We know the value of Y is 3. So log base a half of X, half to the 3 equals X. X equals an eighth indeed. Okay, so X is an eighth. So what we worked out is that point A is at an eighth and three. Does that match up with our picture? Eighth is definitely less than one. So an eighth, cool, that's looking good. So what do we need to describe? Well, we've got, when was this greater than three, greater than or equal to? So we need to describe the X values. So X is an element of, got it? Going from zero up to an eighth. Can't include zero because that's an asymptote. We're not getting there. Eighth, include, exclude. That thing there says include. And that is that for the inequalities. So three questions, exercise six, before we move things around and reflect in the next one. So you know what I say? I say you got to make it maths. Oh, I should press stop. Well,